Échale ganas, mija. Every day from elementary to the end of high school, as my parents would drop me off, they'd leave me with three words. Échale ganas, mija. Which means, give it your all in Spanish. I would always shrug them off, but I always understood that my academic performance meant the world to them. You see, I come from a family where education is highly valued. To my parents, it's the only way to a good future. My father had a dream of going to college, but because of financial issues, he was not able to go. My mother had to drop out in the ninth grade to find a job and support her family financially. They each then immigrated to the States in hopes to fulfill their dreams, only to quickly realize that they had to settle for jobs that would help pay the bills, even if it meant exhausting their bodies each day and being overworked and mistreated. This was a life that my parents did not want for my siblings and I. So it became an expectation that we were to go to college. I knew I had to work hard and persevere. And as time grew closer, not only did my own expectations for myself increase, but my parents' expectations did as well. All eyes felt like they were on me, and it felt like their hopes were too. So by the time I got to college, ready to say goodbye to my parents, they left me with the same three words of encouragement. Échale ganas, mija. I had no idea what college was like, but I thought, legally blonde and Monsters University should serve enough as a guy for me, right? <laughs> Being the first to embark on this new journey increased as I participated in orientation a weekend-long kickoff full of different activities that are supposed to orient you to the college lifestyle. During this weekend, my entire class and I bonded through these extravagant icebreakers. We were standing in a circle playing a game called Step in the Middle If. The playing field was filled with so much energy, but my world came to a halt as I heard the MC say, Step in the middle if you're the first in your family to go to college. And just like that, all the energy was drained from the room. I observed my surroundings only to find the slightest bit of movement. And again, the MC spoke and continued on with the game, and again, chaos erupted the room. But I was still frozen in place. This visually demonstrated to me that I was the other on campus. And it made me feel lesser and embarrassed. But why? What was the reason that I did not want to show that I was the first in my family to go to college? It's an amazing accomplishment, right? But for some reason, it made me feel alone and empty. You see, up to this point, the term first-generation college student had absolutely no effect on me. But arriving at college, it made me view this as a title that I did not want to be associated with. It would let others define me as a person who had absolutely no idea what they were doing, and that should be pitied. And who knows what other de definitions they'd find of first-gen students. Actually, first-generation college students hold a versatile number of definitions. Someone whose family lacks a college-going tradition. A student whose parents or legal guardians did not complete a four-year college or university degree. Or, a subordinate group who lack the knowledge of what being a college student entails and are more likely to drop out. With multiple definitions for what it meant to be first gen, it became hard to solidify myself in such a complex identity, especially given the negative connotations it carried. So, I played my role as the imposter. And let's just say, my first semester, I struggled. I had no one to turn to for help. I had missed the rest of orientation because I did not want to be reminded of how different I was, which meant I didn't know about the resources our campus offered. Within the classroom, though it seemed so simple and easy to go up to a professor and ask him for help about anything I may be struggling, it was not as easy as it sounds. It was never about the question itself being hard to ask, but that the person I was talking to would question my abilities. Opening up to a professor about being first gen was the struggle. What definition or bias did this professor hold on first gen students? Would they become fixated on my identity and pity me? 
Or would they even be able to understand where I was coming from? In fear of getting an answer to these questions, I allowed my own pride and experience of constantly having to work hard on my own get the best of me. I thought I could manage balancing working four jobs, taking a semester's worth of classes, learning a third language, all while attempting to have a social life. But as each day came to an end, I dreaded the start of a new day coming. I was tired and I was stressed and each day just felt more agonizing than the last. I would find myself constantly locking myself in my room wondering, what was wrong with me? Why was nobody struggling as much as I was? My parents were lucky enough to have parents to turn to, parents who could support them, parents who can guide them. The only way my parents could support me was by telling me, echale ganas, mija, and I was giving it my all. I was working 10 times harder than those around me and on my own. Yet it did not feel like enough. I had dug myself so deep into this gigantic hole that by midterms, my professors didn't even have faith in me either. I was met with cruel but honest words saying how I was going to fail and there was nothing I could do about it. Rather than suggesting tips for the future, they told me I should simply withdraw from the class entirely. I was heartbroken, empty, and defeated. And this continued on to the remainder of the semester until I sat with the letter entitled Satisfactory Academic Progress. Within this letter was a notice that I was on academic probation, and that the stat which meant that the status of my enrollment was in question and my financial aid was to be taken away. This was the final thing I needed to be told I was not enough. Well, let's look at the bright side. At least I got a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to give up. How come a straight A student in high, in high school is now failing out of college? Most importantly, how was I supposed to tell my parents, whose hopes and dreams stood on my success, that their daughter was to fail out of college and be kicked out? Just as I was ready to drop out, I found the last person who believed in me, a faculty member. She was someone who I would run into every day and ask me how my semester was going, and each time I'd lie and say I'm loving it. She was someone who I looked up to, but never found the courage to talk to. That was until she told me she was first gen. This was the first time in my entire semester that I had felt seen. While my professors and staff around me told me that I wasn't enough, she showed me that I was enough and capable of more than I ever thought I was. More importantly, she showed me that there was nothing wrong with being first gen. And it was all the motivation I needed to continue. So with her guidance, I spent the next two years to fight to get off academic probation. And believe that there's nothing wrong with being first gen and truly immersing myself in my identity. Along the way, I met a student organization that supported and acknowledged first gen struggles. This group helped me mold my own definition for what it meant to be first gen. A resilient student that adapted skills to persevere and trailblaze a new path in college. Regardless of how resilient we are, we cannot continue to ignore the hardships we face. The stigma of seeking help is a huge barrier that first-gen students face that interferes with their ability to succeed in college. First-gen students are pressured to value independence, which decreases the likelihood of asking for help and increases the likelihood of educational disparities. According to the Center for First-Generation Student Success, first-generation college students make up one-third of the entire college population. Of the one-third, only 27% graduate within the first four years. 
NASPA also reports that first-gen students are more than twice as likely to drop out of college due to many factors, including but not limited to inability to pay for college, lack of support, and lack of resources. And despite all these factors against us, only 28% of colleges and universities hold data on first-gen students. Our identity goes unrecognized. See, the thing about being first-gen is that it's not an identity that is shown on the exterior. So without proclaiming loudly and openly about who we are, there is no representation. Colleges need to be deliberate about building a visible community for first-gen students. Efforts need to be intentional and actively working towards the inclusion and support of first-gen students. Representation amongst faculty and staff is critical to the success for first-gen students. All it took for me to succeed in the midst of my failure was for one single faculty member to see me. Now, I stand here today in hopes that speaking through fear will allow somebody else to speak without it and believe that there is nothing wrong with being first-gen. To my first-gen peers, I now challenge you to create your own definition for what it means to be first-gen. Know that your worth and your value is not based off of your academic performance or by what others want to define you as. It will be a journey to get through college, but understand that you do not have to go through this alone. You do not have to suffer in silence. Embrace who you are unconditionally and never forget you are exceptional, not an exception. Embracing my own identity has allowed me to flourish. I've stepped into spaces I had no idea I would be in. I took leadership opportunities to demonstrate just how much first-gen students are capable of. This past fall, I attended orientation again, only this time as orientation director. Again, I stepped into the extravagant icebreakers we play the same game and the same words were announced. Step in the middle if you are the first in your family to go to college. Only this time, I initiated the chaos and watched as other first-gen students proudly followed after me. Thank you.